Good afternoon, Jules fans. Welcome back to the latest episode of Jules in the Blood Chats 2. I'm very happy to announce this afternoon, not one that I arranged solely on my own. I think uh, another Jules fan got involved, but uh, really pleased to be joined by former midfield star Jack Payne on Skype this afternoon, who's going to have a chat with us regarding his career at Jules, leaving the Jules, and, and obviously what he's doing at the moment. So, first of all, Jack, hope you're well and, and doing all you can to keep busy during a, a difficult time. Yeah, I am. Yeah, mate. Thanks for having me. Um, uh, yeah, it's just the same as everyone else, just getting on with it. And as I said to you earlier, trying to keep the kids occupied all day is the toughest yeah, that's the thing. Biggest at the battle at the moment is keeping them uh, busy and not bored, so to speak. And it's nice to see the sunshine, but in a way, it don't really help because they don't want to go out all the time. Yeah, it's tough. Um, I'm quite lucky and fortunate. We've got the gardens, not a bad size. They're out there playing football and doing what they want to do. So it's only the baby now that we've got to think of during the day. And the other That's two it. are outside. Excellent stuff. Right. Main, obviously, purpose was uh, not to talk about our children. We want to have a chat about um, your football career. Obviously, started at Jules at a really young age. Um, we go all the way back. I think it was October 2008. You made your debut now. Seems like so long ago. And you were a kid yourself. And I think you were 16 when you hadn't quite turned 17. Come on for yeah. a certain Nicky Southall, which is a... Uh, in itself, must have been quite a moment because he's had four, re- well, three really good spells at the club, and he was there four times in total. But something of a Jules legend. Do you remember much about the day in terms of when you was told you was going to be in the the sixteen as it was then? It's an eighteen now. It's a sixteen back then. And did you have much time to sort of get nervous or? Um, yeah, I think I've been training with the first team. Stimo Mark Simpson was brilliant with me. He sort of he took me out of the youth team sort of after a couple of months and he said, look, you're one of us now. And I was training with the first team all the time, which was brilliant for my development. Yeah. Um, and we had a few injuries and that. And I, I used to tra- I travelled that season every game. I travelled all home and all home and away, um, and then just played games in reserves during the week, so I didn't miss my football. Um, but yeah, it's for him. It was at home. It was obviously coming on for Nicky. Um, was a massive thing. I remember the gaffer telling me during the week that I'm going to be on the bench and I think I was nervous the whole time. I'm still a baby myself. Um, but it was a great experience. Obviously, we had a good group of boys there and we were successful. So, they sort of took me in and um, helped me develop the way that I have. Yes, but like you say, you touched on it there. You're saying we was a successful side. We was because obviously we were challenging for promotion throughout that season and we got into playoffs and we'll get to that in a little while. But I suppose it must have been a lot easier than, say, if you been the year before when we were struggling in a higher division in League One and, and battling relegation or again we'll get onto it a little bit but the season afterwards I suppose with experience you, you learnt to deal with it but in terms of that 08-09 season the back end of it must have been brilliant for yourself because obviously I know you didn't get long in either of them two substitute appearances I think it was a minute plus injury time and then five minutes plus injury time but there's not many 16 year olds that are playing football league when they're 16 so in that sense it must have been superb I think you signed your first professional deal after you played for us so I should assume you was on like, a, this, well, like the old YTS type thing yeah I had my scholarship and I signed it just in uh, just after my 17th birthday which was in December and then you picked up player, young player of the year that yeah a, so, a good six minutes <laughs> <laughs> yeah well got my new deal out of it and won that award so it couldn't have been too bad um, and we got promoted but, and so. we got promoted yeah I was going I missed that obviously we're going to chat about that in a bit but I missed out on that and I'll explain why in a bit but yeah, that first day, um, mum and dad have still got my shirt up at indoors. Um, and obviously, I come on and gave away a foul quite early. I, it was Kevin Ellison. I always remember it to this day because obviously I played against him loads. Yeah. Um, and he thought it was Stuart Lewis that done it and they'd been having a battle all game. And I remember I took him down from behind and he was he got up and was pointing in my face and was having a go. And then he realised who it was. But then after the game, he came up to me and he said, um, he said, that's a great way to make your debut, mate. Like, well done. And I've kept like every time I see him now, we always chat about it. And he, he's just a nice, like he's a nice guy. Obviously, he's forty-one. He's still playing the game. He's still going strongly at Morecambe, I think, Morecambe, it, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. So that that always sticks in my head. That bit of the game. Um, but yeah, that, that was a good, it was a good start. Good stuff. And then, like you say, and then you went on. You, I think you played again. It was a couple of months, I think, before you you actually came on again. Yeah. Even though you was in and around the squad all the time. Yeah. Um, and then, like you say, the season ended really well. You signed a contract. Mm-hmm. One young player of the year, um, but you've already mentioned it, so we will talk about it. You missed out at Wembley. You wasn't in the squad. Um, assume you travelled with the rest of the boys? Yeah, or? yeah. I, went, when I, I was training all week with the first team leading up to it, um, and I, I broke my toe sort of the 
so the week before it was a Tuesday that I broke my toe, sort of leading up to it the Saturday. Um, and I was, it was just so much pain, I couldn't even get a boot on. So that's why I missed out. I would have been on the bench, but I would have been... Um, oh, really? I would have been the 17th, 18th man, but I was still would have been able to warm up on Wembley and all stuff like that. Um, so I was a bit gutted, gutted, really, that I got to sort of missed out on that. Um, but I was still there, and we still sort of celebrated with it, all of them. So, so um, you're yeah. almost able to enjoy it, not quite as a fan, but almost yeah. like a fan in the sense yeah, that you could just go there and know you was just going to watch the, like, the game from within the stands. Yeah, that's it. We were sitting just by, like, next to the, all the youth team were there, like, all the club were there, so we sat with everyone. So, yeah, it was a great day, and... Oh, it was just getting that I won't be. I wasn't able to be sort of on there warming up and in the round of change rooms, but um, it's just one of them things, and just made me more hungry. I think to sort of want to do it more in my career. Yeah, I suppose now with the benefit of you know eleven years behind, so like you say, it benefited you. You wanted to get that feeling again and and, and yeah. play in games like that. So in that sense, it's probably it did you a favour. But at the time, like yeah, I was gutted, it, yeah, it was absolutely a, devastated. Yeah, yeah of course. as a seventeen-year-old, yeah, I was gutted. Obviously, I'd been with them all season as well, so it was just I was just glad that we got up because then obviously the following season it was it helped me out massively. So yeah, obviously it was nice to win last minute, and I've spoken to a few of the boys already that you've played with, Simon King, who was there when you were there, but yeah. unfortunately horrendous injury problems yeah. and probably prevented him from going a lot higher in the game. Stuart Nelson, who came in a little bit later. Uh, yeah. Cody, you, you spent time Cody, with him yeah. when he was on loan. and I think he, you'd already gone by the time he came back for the loan. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Keds, he's a good lad. Daki, we managed to get on. Daki. He was similar age to you. He's just a couple of years younger Daki's than you. two years younger than me. Yeah, we've grown up sort of. I've known him since we was about 12. So, yeah, we've grown up together. And also uh, Josh Wright as well, who was came in on loan at the back end of that season yeah. as well, didn't they? Probably yeah, cost you a place in the squad. <laughs> yeah, it might have been me being on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's nice to, to obviously get an inside sort of view from it in terms of the promotion and what was going on in terms of the day, the build-up. Because um, obviously as fans, we only get so much access and you know you can watch DVDs and YouTube highlights and we can get books and stuff like that. But to actually hear it from the horse's mouth is brilliant. Do you remember what it was like that moment when Simeon's header hit the, well, didn't really hit the net did it that was the it thing I remember like speaking to King and he yeah. said he sort of delayed and wasn't sure whether to run off like we yeah. as fans I think there was that sort of split second where we thought has it gone over and then Simeon had already legged it towards gone, the corner yeah. flag um, but yeah just massive elation I can imagine yeah we obviously say we was all, all the with the youth team and all the staff at the club that's where we were sitting with so for all of us it was it was massive. They were obviously the staff were thinking about what it's going to lead to, and obviously us lads are thinking, well, we're going to be in League One next year. So yeah. if we're knocking around there, then happy like that's happy days for us. Um, I think we were just the same as the fans. I think you're off your seat, you're jumping around like you just you're a fan at the end of the day because we, yeah. we were just youth team players really. So it was we just sort of as you said we enjoyed the day, and as soon as it went in, yeah, then it was like party time after that. But you weren't old enough to drink. No, no, yeah, no, no. <laughs> you know, I mean, well, to be fair, still, I didn't invite my parents up to the ground because we went back to the stadium after. Yeah. So, like, all the obviously my parents got invited, um, just because I'd been involved all year. So that was nice. Um, so everyone was just obviously to sell the party that was going on back there after. Yeah, I can imagine, and it's good, like you say, that because even though you weren't actually in the the match day squad itself, that you still took the time to let everyone yeah. be involved who played a part. Because it's not just sixteen players as it was back then, is it? That, that plays a part in a the promotion. There's, you know, you probably use 25, 26 players in that campaign, and you've all played your part, however big or small it is, haven't you? So yeah, and then the training, obviously on the training field every day, you're with them. So it was just, I say, it was just nice, yeah, to be sort of involved, but not as involved as I would have liked, really. Of course. Right, we move on to, to 29, uh, 2009-10, back in League One, like you say, and did a little bit of research. You featured 21 times that season, which again, so as a 17, 18-year-old, must have been incredible. And I looked through the teams that you were playing that season. You played <laughs> Leeds, Norwich, Southampton. I think Blackburn were in the Premier League. You played, you started against them in the, was yeah. that the League Cup, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I can imagine it must have been really tough as well because we really struggled so for you I suppose as a teenager having only known a successful side the season mm. before was it was it quite difficult to almost switch mentality so to speak in the fact that we're down the bottom and we're trying to stay above a line rather than trying to you know sorry what I'm trying to stay in a division rather than get out of a division yeah 
Yeah, no, um, Stimo and Robbo, Mark Robson were brilliant with me. Um, obviously, I played, I had a good run in the team. And when things started getting difficult, they sort of eased me out of the team. And yeah, sort of... you, started, you started the first four or five of the season mm. and then results started dropping yeah. off because we, I think we won 5-0 the first day. Swindon, so yeah. Yeah. Swindon at home, yeah. Which was always a, a good result against them. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, then I think the autumn came and it started just, we started to struggle a little bit. And I, I noticed then that, yeah, so you yeah. five five starts in the first five, I think it was, but only 13 overall in the season. So, yeah, you sort of phased sort of in and out depending on the form, yeah. I can imagine. They sort of eased me and yeah, because it, it was tough for everyone, obviously, and I'm, I was 17, so it was like they wanted to protect me more than anything. Um, but I didn't see that then. I played the first five and I'm thinking, I want to play now. So That's going to sort of my next question. I suppose you're thinking yeah. when I played five, I'm, why am I not playing all Yeah, the no, and I used to, Stimo was really good to me, always used, he was always speaking to me, like always in the office if I needed anything. So it was, he'd always talk to me and say, look, I'm, we're not, you're not involved or you're not playing. Um, and this is the reason why. Um, but it was all learning for me still. I was still a baby. So um, him and Robbo were brilliant for me at the club, um, sort of set my sort of base then as the player that I've become really in my yeah, position. Um, but yeah, that first game was the best. That that was the best feeling for me. Obviously, um, starting we winning five nil, and then there's a couple of minutes left, and my number comes up on the ball to come off. And I always remember it. I'm walking off, and I obviously got a stand ovation. Obviously, we won five nil. I done quite oh, well. Shit. Um, and I just remember Stimo saying to me, he's like, "Clap the fans, clap the fans," and I'm like, "What? Like, I don't know what was going on." And he was like, "Clap them." Maybe turn around and clap all the fans, and I never forget that. That was obviously my first start. And that's yeah. always something that sort of sticks in my head with that day. I suppose at that point you're thinking, oh, it's quite easy here in league. Right? Yeah, this, this is it. I've, I've done it now. I'm really done done show. I didn't find it up top of the league. Lovely stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah. We all know that it's not always, you know, it's not all sunshine and five nil wins and clean sheets and, yeah. and stand innovations. Football's, football's never been like that. And I think that's probably the reason we love it. But yeah. Um, just trying to think, who was in that? I'm trying to think who was in that Blackburn side that season as well, because they'd have. They'd have had some big players back then, wouldn't they, as well? Yeah, I think like Nzonzi, I think people like that were playing. Oh, yeah, uh, he's, he's in Spain now, I think, isn't he? When yeah, the feet played from Roma, Sevilla, yeah. Yeah, they had a few big hitters playing. Um, I that suppose he stands out for you in terms of he sort of plays a similar type of role. Yeah, yeah, he was just a way two foot taller than me. <laughs> I was going to say, he was a slightly <laughs> he's different build, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he's a big boy, but um, yeah, stuff like that always helps. Like, um, But that, so that season we played against, obviously you've mentioned it, the big teams that we played against. And some of the times I had to play out of position because we had injuries, um, but it was still the experience to play against them. We had, and I played Norwich away and Southampton away. So playing in them big stadiums at 17 was obviously you a great. Did we beat Leeds 3 2 that season? At home, yeah. yeah Did I you start right that one or was you on the back? I played right back. Play right back that game. Yeah, because Baz, you, Baz had a bad injury. I don't know. You, I was going to say, didn't you come on really early in that Baz one? Baz got injured. Yeah, literally within five minutes, I think broke his nose quite bad. Um, and Stuart Lewis was out of a broken arm, I think, at the time. Because he so was normally he, the one that killed him at fullback, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. So he played there a few times while Baz was injured, and then Stewie got in, and it was like, well, he was just like playing. You're like you're going in. Um, and then obviously we, like the players they had playing, like I had Beckford was always pulling on to me and stuff like that. So. Um, but yeah, to beat them at home, I remember the ground was rocking. It was full to the rafters as well. There weren't a seat in there. Um, and they're the days that you sort of remember because they're the best days, obviously. Of course, yeah. It's been a lot year now. They're on the verge of getting back into Premier League. And they, they sh- well, I think they are a Premier They're a Premier League side. Yeah. And everything, but yeah, and but where they've been for the last 15 years is, is probably wrong. They're, mm. they're a huge, huge club and they've won European titles and football leagues and stuff like that. So, yeah, again, it comes back to at that age, it must have been incredible to be playing against. And, and they weren't as good as they can be or they have been or they probably will be again. But that don't matter, does it? That's, that's not your fault. They're in that division for a reason. And to beat Leeds... All it says in the record books yeah. is beat Leeds. It doesn't say beat Leeds, had financial problems, had points deductions. It's, it's none of that. It doesn't matter at all. And they were still one of the best teams in that league. Obviously, Norwich went up as champions, I think. And obviously, Leeds went up as well. So, just to, obviously, we played. I played the game at Norwich when they won the league. Um, I played right back again. Um, but that was the day that they won, actually won the league. So, that was manic. That was like a party for them at their place. 
Um, wasn't that the season when they got beat like seven one the first day of the season? Sat the manager and then I think Paul yeah. Lambert took over. Yeah, yeah remember Lambert Cody took... talking about it when we spoke to him a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, oh, but that was manic. That was like that was a proper party. That Carol like, yeah. like, um, but that was another good experience. Obviously, I done really well in that game. So um, for me, it was it was just a learning curve. I was just enjoying playing playing football really at that at that age. It was just any game that I got, I knew I had to I had to do everything I could because I was. A bit slight still, and it was I suppose you almost like not try harder. That's probably the wrong way of putting it because then it might indicate that you don't try in all the games. But I suppose if you come up against a bigger team, so to speak, yeah. um, and against so-called better players that yeah. probably should be maybe playing the division above or in the Premier League, yeah. I suppose you almost think I've got to be right on it here. So you make a concerted effort to be more yeah. concentrated, whereas. No disrespect, if you're playing like a, a team that's struggling, that's not on the yeah. game, you probably you can get away with slightly more in a game than you can if you're up against a top class winner, if you're playing at right back or a top class centre, like you say, mm. against Stephen and Zonzi. Whereas if you're coming up against a journeyman sort of League Two player, you're probably thinking, yeah. I can get away with a couple of bits here, which I won't get away with against the top class players. Yeah, that's the thing. Obviously, I'll. I'm always looking. I'm fairly confident. Whoever I play against, I'm going to be better than them. So it's that's my mentality, and I think that's I think that was instilled instilled in me really from a young age. I think obviously I'm in the team at 17, and Steve says you're in there on merit. So in my head, I'm thinking, well, I'm doing everything right here. So just got to carry on as normal. But yeah, it's the bigger teams. Obviously, they always you see it in their cup games. You play against a bigger side. Everyone gets not up for it more, but it's they're just a massive club, and um, we had some good results against the big ones. To be fair. Um, Cut the bad ones, but um, for us in that season, that was probably one of the highlights really of beating them. Really, yeah, I suppose in the season that in the season we're going to get onto it in the next question, yeah. it ultimately ended in huge disappointment. Yeah. I, I think it was yesterday was ten years since it came up on. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, I see it on Twitter. I yesterday. tweeted it out as well, which I yeah. probably shouldn't have done because that made me fed up again. <laughs> but but it is it is what it is, and again, like you say, it's all part of a learning curve, especially at the young age that you were at the time. And Let's talk about Wickham. We have to. I mean, mm-hmm. looking back now, I still cannot believe how we managed to get ourselves relegated with 50 points. We were, what, two or three places outside the bottom four <laughs> at kickoff. We knew that only a weird set of results would see us get relegated. Not wanting to dig you out or the boys out, but I think from a fan's perspective that day, we were horrific. Mm. And I know I've seen fans comments on Twitter in the last couple of days about it. Stimo didn't really endear himself to the support at yeah. the end of the game. Yeah, that was, that was sort of the last straw, wasn't it, I think? But I think to us, it, it just looked like, we just looked like we rolled over and died. Mm. And yeah. almost like we was relying on the fact that we almost looked like we knew the other results couldn't go against us because it was such a freaky set of results yeah. and then I've written it down I think Hartlepool went and drew at Brentford who were ninth and had had a good season shouldn't have happened Tranmere all right beat Stockport Stockport were long gone mm-hmm. um, we lost to an already relegated Wickham mm-hmm. and then Exeter went and beat Huddersfield who were in the playoffs it was it was a freak yeah. set of results but and I, I have to ask you was, we didn't win an away game all season did we? No uh, what was that like, trying to get your head around that? Because the home form was brilliant. I think we won 12 games. Yeah. Right? I only lost three, but mm. away from home, we was beyond bad, I suppose. Yeah, I've, I've had this question a few times and I really don't, I can't, there's nothing I've put my finger on to say, oh, that's why, that's why. It's just, it was just one of them records that you really didn't want to be involved in. But Of course, yeah. Um, it was, no one could really put their finger on it. Obviously, if you, if there was if it was, then we would have obviously done something different. But of course, yeah, no, you can't. The, like you say you can't work it the out. Wickham, that's sorry, but the Wiccan game was just. I remember going into it. We was we was all confident. We were like, right, this is us. We're gonna we're staying up. There's there's nothing like nothing's gonna happen to make us go down. We're gonna stay up. Like, um, I just remember thinking we don't even need to win. Like, if if we draw the game, but obviously we try obviously try and win it. But if we're drawing the game, then happy days because we don't go down. Yeah, like we, that was yeah, literally all we needed was a point, point wasn't it? and enough, you like, still needed all these other weird yeah. results to go completely against us. So it's like I just and I remember, I remember what was it? I remember it happened? We was it was just, I just remember the end. Obviously, the fans that Stimo was getting the abuse that he was getting, and obviously, as you said, that was the sort of the final straw for him. I think at the club, um, 
but yeah, that day was a dark day because we had the presentation after. Um, yeah, they're never ideal, are they? <laughs> and I just, Love it at night. I just same remember, night as the final game. And I just remember sitting there, and I think I won Young Player of the Year again. And you just think you're going up on stage here, and we shouldn't really be doing this or celebrating. I was say, do you almost on. think? Do you almost go up and pick it up and think I don't really deserve this? In yeah, sense, like, because you know you've been day, relegated. Yeah, I think on that day you're thinking like, oh, we should like shouldn't be doing this like this. We shouldn't be having these awards and stuff like that. Um, but obviously, the bigger picture was for me at that age. I'd, sort of the relegation year was one of the darkest times really for me at the club. Yeah. Um, but also, I was only 17 and I played 21 games or whatever it was. And yeah. So sort of, now you look back at it and think that sort of it's toughened me up probably as a kid there because I had to go through that and it, it was tough obviously when you're in a struggling team there's things that go on during the season that sort of I've looking up thinking well what's going on here yeah you know you have arguments people having like not fights but you just come in close like and so it was just a massive learning curve for me and I think that's the that's what I took out of it really um I was devastated obviously it's my club I'm hometown boy so it was like yeah. it was tough for me but obviously it was tough for everyone at the club and um, yeah, it was it was a bad it was a bad sort of day that I always remember that as one of the bad like the worst days I've had at the club. Right, we move on then to back in League Two, summer of 2010, and uh, Stimo went. We know that. Um, yeah. I think everyone probably saw it coming. Looking back now with hindsight, but I think it was probably the right decision. And uh, another club legend, Andy Hessenthaler, was back. Obviously, massive player for us late 90s then he led the side in the championship for, for three or four seasons and uh, again for you it must have been another incredible experience because you continued to to play loads of games 34 games that season I think mm. when Hesse came back and uh, scored your first goal in <laughs> yeah nice little scruffy one I think when it went yeah we'll, get on, it. Better, we'll get on to the better ones in a little while I still remember it now I remember I don't know what I was doing that far forward and the cross come in and sort of Cody Went to head it, but hit his chest, and the keeper was literally just palmed it down. And I was just running in for some reason and just you know, tapped you it. You sort of suddenly end up just about three or four yards from goal. Yeah, yeah, four yards out. Yeah, just tapped it in. I suppose um, in terms of the first one, it's probably the ideal scenario. You yeah. can't really miss from there. And yeah, that was yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I was doing that far forward, but um, yeah, it's always nice to get the first one, and you always remember it. And I'm just yeah, going, I suppose even though you're not, that wasn't your job. You was you was not a goal scoring midfielder in that sense. You you played probably sort of deep lane playmaker yeah. type. Um, I'm trying to think what formation we was playing back there under Hesse and, and Stimo. It would have probably still been 4-4-2. Four, four, three, four, four, three, three, three. Three. Maybe with Stimo. Yeah, Hesse we did, we? Sorry, yeah. Hesse sort of, we fluttered between 4-4-2, four, 4-3-3. Four, four, three, three. Um, yeah, we sort of messed, and the diamond sort of, we played a bit. So it was, I was always the deepest midfielder in there. Um, so the one, the one effectively being the shield for the back yeah. four. Yeah. Yeah, that was always my role, so um, which I'm still doing now, really, to a degree. Yeah, um, but it's nice for me. We when we was playing there, he wanted us to play as well, and so did Stimo, to be fair. So we did try and get the ball down and have a go. So I think what that's was Hesse like? Yeah. What was it like playing under Hesse in terms of um, <laughs> in terms of the different approach? Because obviously slightly more old school, I'd imagine, yeah. than Stimo, because um, he'd started playing the game a, a bit earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I know we keep going on about it, but as a, a teenager. And suddenly, your manager's probably in some, plenty of fans' eyes the greatest player yeah. to have played for the football club, or certainly in a lot of people's top fives. That must have been one hell of an experience. Was it overwhelming at times, or did he have sort of was you in awe of him, or was it just just great to be able to learn from one of Gillingham's best? Yeah, so I knew him a little bit before. Obviously, I've been playing at the club, and obviously, Scott, uh, the chairman Scully was obviously. I think he. Might have been at a game once and he just introduced me and stuff like that. Obviously, Hesse kept an eye on the club because it's his club as well. Yeah. Um, so I knew him a little bit. Um, but yeah, it was great playing under him. Obviously, I'm still sort of good friends with him now. I could pick up the phone any time and give him a shout. Um, but yeah, it was good, obviously. But I think that season we had Bayo and Cody up top. Yeah. We had a we had a way that we could play that we know if we got it into B, it would be held up or it would be flipped on. So... I think that was the season Cody got loads at you, didn't it? Yeah, so we were, in the league. Yeah, yeah. Up, up top we were strong, right? So we knew if we could get the ball there, not just lumping it, but it was get it into them, give them a bit of quality, and we know that Cody's going to score. B, I think B scored either like 
and maybe nearly 15 maybe as well. So it was like, it weren't just there, just a battering ram. Um, no, I think that's the trouble with Bale is he gets probably sort of pigeonholed a little bit because yeah. he is an but he's, I mean, mate, he's scored a few and obviously that partnership was, they were on fire. Um, it was just gutting at the end that we couldn't nick in the playoffs. But um, yeah, for me, that another experience playing that many games at that age under Hesse, obviously, and you always used to bat me for it, but he used to like, like he used to like me, and he used to want me to play. I was like, if I was fit, I was playing at that age. So it was, it was nice to have that backing from someone like him. So it must be incredible to have, like you say again. We keep talking about the age, but at that mm. age to have that trust in you. Yeah. To say right, you're going to go and play 35 games. Or mm. I think I've written it down. You played 69 times in two seasons under Hesse. So yeah. you're looking at 34, 35. That was the two seasons, which was mm. individually. You must be really proud. of. Yeah, that was massive. And obviously for him, he played in midfield as well. So for him to back me and sort of be happy with what I was doing was a, was obviously a massive thing at the time. Excellent. And then we move into, you've already mentioned, 10-11 was the season. I think we missed out on goal difference, didn't we? Was that the season yeah. we had to go Chesterfield last day and they'd already won and they won the league? Yeah, I think so. Like, yeah, yeah, I think it was, yeah. Yeah, we, we missed out yeah, just slightly again, which was got in the second year. Yeah, 11 12, we got close again. I think missed out by a point. Mm. Um, like I said, you played another 34 games, started pinching a few more goals. I've written a couple down here. Mm-hmm. Just to scream a rocket. And you, you, see, you didn't do tap ins after that <laughs> one, really, against uh, Stockport. I've got one, Barnet was, was decent enough. Uh, at yeah. home, I think. Was that, no, that was that under That was that under Hill, yeah. And then the one against Bournemouth in the Cup was even better. Yeah, the just, Bournemouth. Just watched that on YouTube quickly before. I, contacted you absolute screamer it looks like he's straight down the keeper's throat it, was, it must have been doing all sorts yeah, of things yeah just moved I think at the last minute but that was a funny one I'd just come back from injury been out for like about a month or so and I was I remember it the first time I was rubbish like I, I was way <laughs> off it um, and I just remember picking it up it was just for half time and I just thought I'm going to hit this and I'm just so glad it went in because it sort of got them, got Essie off me back a little bit because I was having one really <laughs> Yeah, you might have been uh, hooked at half time yeah. before. But then to put one in, and then obviously I think we, that was one all then, I think. So coming in at half time away at Bournemouth one all, it was it was different then. Obviously, if I hadn't, I probably would have got him the old hair dry treatment off of Hesse. Yeah, and I think we ended up, we drew three on. I think we won the, I think the replay, the replay was, at home. Yeah. was well three two, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, so it was, yeah Steph Payne scored the winner. Weren't boring home. games, them two, were they? <laughs> and then, um, yeah, you've already touched on it, but just. To sum up them two seasons, because like we've said, individually, you were really good. You were playing plenty of games. Generally, we were really good. We played some good stuff. I remember we scored plenty. Yeah. But I remember there were some mad games that we lost in that season. Yeah. I think we went to Accrington and scored four and somehow managed to lose by three goals. Yeah. Do I remember? I think there was a mad home game at home to Wimbledon. We were 3-1 up, lost 4-3, I think. Mm. Just... We lost to Dover in the Cup as well. That oh, yeah, because we signed Adam Burks on the back yeah. of that, didn't we? Bless him. And I think he spent most of his time injured, unfortunately. Yeah, we had some, we had some weird results. Um, you know, there was one, I think, might have been Berry away as well. It's just, it's just, I only remember that one because Hesse really... Was that a 5-4 it. as well? He really lost it at half-time. It always sticks in my head because obviously he could, he could get angry, like everyone knows it, but God. he really he really went for it at half-time and that always sticks in my head. Whenever we talk about it, like that one always gets brought up. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine. It's, it's. I suppose it's nice if you come out on the right side of them thrillers and as, yeah. as neutrals watching them, you probably think, oh yeah, this is great to watch. But if you're trying to, you're in that team or you're the manager of that team and you keep getting beat by the odd goal in nine or 11 or whatever it was when we were doing it, it um, probably starts to grate a little bit. Yeah. And then yeah, you start think... thinking, oh, I'd love to take a scrappy 1-0 somewhere along the line. <laughs> yeah, we never really had many 1-0s under Hesse. No. I, don't, <laughs> they I, weren't, can't, they weren't I can't remember one there. Yeah. We all, we always was in entertaining games. To be fair, and I think that's the way we played. We was we was going for it. Whatever who we were playing against, we was going to attack them. And sometimes it worked. Most of the time it worked. There's only a few games that it never. But um, yeah, them two seasons. Obviously, I really enjoyed them two seasons playing under him. Um, obviously, he's local as well, so he knows the club. Yeah. I know the club, and it was just a perfect fit really at that time. Yeah, and it, it was really disappointing to miss out because. And I had this conversation with fans, and obviously I'm older than you, I'm 37, so I remember Hesse joining mm-hmm. as a player, and people say, oh, he weren't as good as a manager. I say, well, hang about. I know mm-hmm. it was when he took over the championship years, it was a team that Tony Pulis had built, and then 
Peter Taylor had tweaked, but he still had to keep us in that division yeah. for three seasons, and he did it brilliantly, and he bought in some really good footballers of his own, like Chris Hope and Marlon King and that type of player. Mm. It was, oh yeah, but then he come back in League Two and we was unsuccessful, but we missed out by effectively a point and a couple of goals. It yeah. wasn't like he'd been we're told to win the league yeah. and we'd finish like halfway down mm. or battling relegation. We missed out by the finest of margins, and we all yeah. know at any level of football, anyone who's watched the game or played the game, that, that football is determined on fine margins a lot of the time. And unfortunately, two years in a row, we come out just the wrong side. But mm-hmm. I think the one that sticks in my mind was the second season, I think, was when we had, I think we had the last two home games. We lost them both 4-2, didn't we? To, mm-hmm. to rubbish, I'm not being funny. Yeah. It was Field and was it Barnes? Yeah. Yeah, they were right down up. the bottom and we, I think we only had to win one of them or draw both of them and we ended up cocking up both of them, unfortunately. Yeah. So we saw, yeah, frustrating we, with them two, them two games as isolated fixtures. Yeah, we killed ourselves and we knew that. And ultimately, Hesse paid a price for it, which obviously we'll get onto. But it wasn't, um, we killed ourselves there. We should have been beating them. Both teams been in the playoffs. Probably would have moved up a couple of spots as well. Like in the, in yeah. the playoffs, wouldn't have just got in there. We'd have been in there. Um, and that was just a gutting thing for him, really. For me, and I'm local, he's local, and he's like, give everything for the club for him. Not to have the chance in the playoffs, I think, was just gutting, really. Yeah, yeah, and it wasn't. Yeah, and as fans, I remember at the time as well, it was so frustrating because, like we've already said, for, for 80, 85% of the season, we'd been yeah. really good. And I suppose we could probably stomach it more if we had to go to like top of the league or something, yeah. or we got beaten by teams that were up in the sort of top six or seven. But for two teams that were right down the bottom and, and were in no type of form at the time either, I don't think it was. Mm. Yeah, what really sticks in the throat. And as you've said, Hesse ultimately paid the price because he was relieved of his duties. Because it's weird, because I've, I've listened to a recent podcast with Hesse that someone else done, and also with Martin Allen. And I think it was Hesse actually sat the interview for Martin. Yeah, he moved see, upstairs, Hesse, and then he was Hesse part of like, the recruitment process, which is a little bit weird, but it's almost like, I don't know, being invited around your ex's parents for tea, I suppose. It's a bit strange, but... He said he yeah. loved the club so much that he was happy to do it. And it, thankfully, it worked out all right. But Yeah, we found it strange, obviously. But him and obviously Scully, the chairman, obviously got on really well. So yeah. it was a bit of a, look, I'm going to relieve you of being the manager, but I really want you involved in the club. Like You've got the best interest of the club at heart. Um, and then he obviously went upstairs. And obviously, yeah, he sat the interview with Martin Allen. And then obviously that season started. Yeah, and it started really well because I've written down again, I've got another couple of goals of yours. Another one from outside the box. Barnet again. I bet I hated you. Yeah. <laughs> Not in the, that was, I think that was bottom corner, but a really good finish. Yeah. Just one touch out your feet and managed to drill it across the keeper. Yeah. And then similar one away at Northampton as well. It went Northampton, yeah. And it proved to be, I think, your final two goals for the club. But you yeah. started off that season. I mean, as a club, we were brilliant as a side. And I think we won our first... I don't know, it was six, seven, eight yeah, games. Six, seven, yeah, we were flying, yeah. Gave ourselves a massive head start and I think we only dropped off the top, I think, once or twice for like a week, didn't we? We never yeah. dropped out of that top two or three. And um, 38 points from the first 19 games that you played in, which is a staggering record, to be quite frank. Mm. Um, and then Peter became calling. Yeah, it was a strange one. Obviously, I was... I, my dad keeps a scrapbook and I was sort of, I found them the other day and I was just looking through them um, and there was loads of stories about when Hesse was in charge, like talking yeah. about me and obviously Martin Allen come in, but there was one on the story and it was just saying that when the club put me, they put me up for transfer really. Right. But they thought it'd be best for me to go and sort of play. I wasn't going to fit into my, I wasn't fitting into Martin Allen's way. Obviously I played a lot of games, but obviously it was a weird one. I, the newspaper cut in, yeah, so it was, but I didn't fall out of anyone. It was just they had a bid come in for me and I think they sort of wanted me to go. It was good for the club and obviously for me, going to play in the Championship, it was... Well, yeah, because that's what I've written down. Was it the law of the Championship or was it something else? But that doesn't make sense to me, Jack. The fact yeah, that they no, say you didn't fit into their plans when you played pretty much all of the games the first half of the season and we were top of the league. Yeah, no, it was a strange one, obviously. Peterborough won. Um, I went to... Funny thing is, I went to Crystal Palace. That's who come in first. David Wright, obviously come on loan to us, didn't he, the first time? Yeah. Right, he was meant to be signing for us. And I was going on loan to Crystal Palace with a view to a permanent move there. So what, what division were they in at the time? 
championship. They were championship they as well, the same so, as Peterborough. But yeah. they were, obviously they were probably doing yeah. better than Peterborough were struggling against relegation. Well, I, I went to the Palace training ground. I was there. I was ready. Met Ian Holloway. I was upstairs. Right. I was upstairs ready to do the contracts. And he just got a call and said, David Wright's decided to go to Colchester. So the whole so, swap deal yeah, top thing was off. Yeah, so my deal was off. And then obviously that's when Peterborough, <laughs> a couple of days later, Peterborough come in and Barry Fry said, look, we want to take him. Because you went on great. loan initially, didn't you, for the, for the yeah. back end of that season? Yeah, I went on loan, yeah, and then that's when they come in. Um, well, in terms of the move itself, if you look at it, you're jumping up from League 2 to... Oh, yeah, it's brilliant. Gym, that, so it's that, a no-brainer. Obviously, that's why I went, really. Obviously, I started to come out of the team at Gillingham a little bit, and obviously, I wasn't happy. I want to play. Like, I was at that age then where I thought I played a lot of games the last two seasons. I need to keep playing. Yeah. Um, so I think it helped everyone really because we had a lot of we had a lot of good players that year. Obviously, we won the league, so it was. And obviously, my and sort of people were in and out. It was like you'd have three or four games, they'll pull you out, have a rest, and then you go again. But at that, at that stage, there's a lot of like, players that I've spoken to about that season. He said that even if you were playing well, they'd say like Keds is the prime example. And I think I've mentioned this on a couple of these mm-hmm. interviews that I've done recently. He said I think he, he played one week and scored two, and we won. And then the next Saturday, he weren't even in the eighteen. And yeah. he's thinking, what, what the hell's going on here? I'm, I'm top scorer. I've scored yeah. twice. I don't need a rest. Um, but he said that Martin Allen did that all the time. It wasn't. Yeah, it, was just, it wasn't just him picking on certain players. He did it with every player. And I mean, you yeah. can't you can't fault that method in the sense that we won the title. That's the thing. We won the title, so there was. Um, there's nothing we can say to that but obviously yeah that move come up for me and um, that was obviously a chance for me to then go and play in a championship which obviously I couldn't you turn did down. as well it's not like you went there and sat on the bench yeah. so you played yeah. I think, sort of 12 15 games yeah and again they got, they did get relegated didn't they but we went, we went down on goal difference on the last day with the <laughs> highest the highest number of points in the championship ever to get relegated there's something about you wasn't there <laughs> I mean, Jinx, that one won't sign me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah, as, long as, top, as long as they're top at Christmas, they might sign you in January. If not, they're going to steer well clear. Because <laughs> <laughs> we was at, I remember it was Crystal Palace last game of the season. Um, we were two one up, and then we lost three two in the last minute, and that took us down. That was. And the, you could have been at Palace as well, ironically. Yeah, and then they won. They won the playoffs as well. <laughs> Lovely. That was a double one, yeah. Um, so, do you still that, speak to David Wright? Or? <laughs> uh, no, it was just a learning curve. And then, obviously, I come back from the loan. Obviously, the following season, then people have put their bid in. Um, but they did come calling at the start of the season as Martin Allen took over. So, they went in the summer of 2012. Yeah, right. so they come calling. And we didn't agree personal terms on that, but it was quite a hefty fee. And I think Martin Allen had players lined up to bring in. Um, and then obviously I said, no, I'm not going. So I don't think it rubbed him up the wrong way. But I think he, he half he had players that he was ready to sign. So he was almost going to sort of build his own squad on the basis yeah. of you leaving and he could use some of that money. And then yeah. it didn't happen. Yeah. And then not that there was, but then there was just obviously things during the season. Obviously I weren't playing and stuff like that. So then obviously the Peterborough and Palace didn't come up at sort of the right time. Fair enough, like, and it's football, isn't it? That's what happens. Yeah, these, happen. these these weird things happen. Like you say, you you couldn't believe it, so you end up going down on the last day again to the Crystal Palace side that you could have yeah. joined, and it is what it. And he left the team that ended up winning the title. Did you get a medal? Yeah, I did. Yeah, we come back um, the end of the year presentation. I was invited to. He rang oh. Darren Ferguson, and um, obviously their season. If we had one more week left, so obviously the boys won the league at home, and then. That was the last game, and then we had. I still had a game the following week, so yeah. I was invited down, and I got my trophy that night. All the boys got theirs on the stage, and I was the same. Oh, that's good. Yeah, because yeah, so obviously you had a massive part in it the first half of the campaign, yeah, it was, so it's yeah. only right that you did get the medal that you deserved, of course. Right, we've sort of summed up Jules leaving Jules now, then, and just want to talk briefly before I let you go about the latter part of your career. So, and I say that like, it makes you sound like a veteran, but I think you're getting around in 28 still, it's ridiculous. But, you've had five clubs since you left them, Jack. How, I, I don't understand that because, you, you're really good at Jules. Obviously, you went to Peterborough, he's playing plenty at a good standard and, can you put your finger on why it's been a little bit sort of nomadic the last few seasons? I think you've been no. to Blackpool, you've been to Ebsfleet, yeah. uh, Eastleigh, you're at at the moment. There's one more as well. I went on loan to Orient from Pittsburgh. Orient, that was the other one, yeah. That was the five. I had my two years at Peterborough. Obviously, I was captain the second year. Um, but I was sort of the last sort of player from the championship sort of 
era, if you know what I mean. Right, okay. I think the, the owner was thinking we were going to go up, so then it wouldn't have mattered, obviously. Um, but I think I was just, it was just phasing out. The squad was changing as it does at clubs, and I was the it last one. It does change a lot at Peterborough, to be. I mean, they do like chucking money at it every yeah. summer. And I was, and I was um, in my life, I had a year left. Um, no, then, sorry, I had two years left, signed a four year deal, and then that's when Hendo, Ian End, and Hesse were at Orient. And yeah. I see that I weren't involved in the start of the season and sort of said, look, do you fancy it? Um, so that's obviously... What, what, division were, what Was that when Orient were League 2? Orient were League 2, yeah. yeah. So that was, that was that decision to go there. Um, was getting again, just missed out on the playoffs there. Um, and then coming back to Peterborough, I weren't sure what, what was going to happen. Obviously, Hendo left Orient, so that one was gone. And I weren't sure... Well, Hesse took over for a while, didn't he? Yeah, with the Italian... The Italian so was you under the, I was gonna, the Italian lunacy yeah, position, yeah, right. <laughs> And I, that was just crazy. It was I didn't want to go back there like after all that had happened. It was just crazy. Um so then obviously I would gone back to Peterborough and I had a year left on my deal and they basically said to me, Look, we, we want you to go now, like we, like your first two years brilliant, he said, but then we've got a different route, which was fine, like Barry Fry and the chairman there always got on with them. There was no bad blood in it, it was just football. Sure. Um, and then the the Blackpool one come up just after the season started and that was obviously a massive move because it was it was uprooted into the other end of the country. Um, I was going to say, yeah, because generally you've been, been sort always of south, south yeah. east, really, yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm so glad that I've done it because it just sort of taught me another way of life, really, away from everyone. Um, like I had obviously my missus, the wife, and um, the kids there. So it was uh, it was good. It was a good year. Like obviously, we got promoted, played at Wembley. Um, so the the chance to go there was the correct call to actually go. Um, it was just a shame that obviously I didn't get offered my extension. Um, there was a few bits and pieces why that didn't happen. Obviously, the Oysons were still in charge. So, as I was say, again, in terms of owners, like the Italian at Leighton Orient, yeah. the Oysons were awful as yeah, well. So I, I think, money wise, I don't think it, it was feasible for them to sort of pay me sort of what my Peterborough money was, if you know what I mean, in the league yeah. above. Obviously, got promoted and they probably thought, look, that's not what we want to do. Um, but obviously, that I've mentioned it on Twitter this week. I had a couple of fans ask me, but that's the time when I I'm looking and I'm talking to my wife at home, and I'm like, we haven't got, I haven't got many offers here. Like, I've just been promoted, paid I think 38, 40 games, and I'm not getting really good offers here. Like from any like League Two clubs, I'm thinking, surely someone's going to want to take me. So you've just league... been promoted from League Two into League One. League I mean, One. I got a few. The phone's just not ringing. Got a few sniffs and that. My agent got a few, but the deals that were being offered, I just thought, no, like, I've just done really well this year. Um, it just made me think, like, I know football don't always go the way you want it to go. Um, so I felt like I, lo- I fell out of love with the game, but I was just a bit more, I don't know how football works, if you know what I mean. So it was a bit of a... Again, and that comes with experience, didn't it? I suppose if that was when you were yeah. sort of 18, 19, I would, you would have thought, well, what took, would be, would, be, but yeah. Yeah, I took another deal. But then, obviously, Keds was at Edgeley, and obviously I spoke to Daryl McMahon a few times during the season. He's like, look, I'd love to get you in and blah, blah, blah. Um, so when that happened, we left it about a month and I wasn't getting really anywhere. Um, we decided then to take the move back home um, just so the kids, the kids can go to school at home. Um, and people say to me, like, you should have stayed in the league. And I'm like, yeah, but it's not all about, like, oh, yeah, I want to play now. I want to play as high as I can and I still do now. But there's other factors now that when you've got kids and it is just, yeah, it becomes different responsibilities. Other factors you can't stop that come you, into it. Like, if I could have stayed in Blackpool for another year, then I would have. It's not like yeah. I didn't want to, I didn't want to move home or anything like that. It was just that at that time, that move was best suited sort of us as a family. Um, and sometimes I do think should I have stayed in the league? Um, but in hindsight, you can't you can't do that in hindsight. It's not um, you can't think about that all the time. Otherwise, you'd always be thinking about it. Um, Sure. Well, that's it. And the trouble is, you can't. You don't get ages and ages to make a decision. Nah. If you stall on it, then they'll go and find someone else to play in your position. Yeah. So it was. Yeah, it was. A, it was a funny one. Obviously, I went there. With every intention the club were going for it, like, and wanted to be getting up. And then I got injured that sort of in early on in the season. I missed six months. So my first year was a nightmare coming back home. Um, and my second year, I played loads of games. Then went on loan to Eastleigh for a little while, coming back from injury just to get some games. Yeah. Come back and played every game at Eastleigh. So you know, it was just a shame that all ended, obviously, with the owners the way it did. Um, another theme here, isn't there, unfortunately? I know, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's a nightmare, isn't it? Um, <laughs> and I signed for Eastleigh in the summer, and obviously, Stregs was in the title winning team at Gillingham. Yep. 
that was an easy fit for me to go and play oh, for Hesse, him. Hesse was there for a little while, wasn't he, as well? So Hesse, he went back Hesse was manager, team. yeah, and then obviously Stuart Strebs took over, so it was just an easy one for me to really go and play for him. I knew him, nice guy, liked the way he, like, he played, and yeah. um, that's where we're at now. So you were playing plenty of games before this yeah, bloody played, virus played, took played, over and stopped the world? Yeah, probably this season, probably I've gone back to probably for the last three seasons this is probably my best season I'm playing probably the best football I have done I think that does come with age again and experience yeah of course um, I played every minute of every league game I think I was on 12 assists at this point so like, I'm I'm sort of yeah I was really enjoying my football really um, getting back to enjoying it again and not worrying about anything but the football and that's I suppose like you've already touched on you said about different responsibilities you've got a wife now kids it's not just you to think about it's, it's other people and the little people as well that's the thing you don't yeah, have like, to keep continuously uprooting them and moving them around the country and I suppose in that sense sometimes the money or the level that you're playing that's probably not quite as important as it was maybe eight nine years ago when it was just you that you had to look after yeah, yeah that's the thing is my boy my eldest probably moved four different houses in six years probably five no, so years not good for them you want them to be it's settled not, somewhere yeah, it's, it's, it's not fair on them obviously I had to, my little man went my eldest went to school in Blackpool that was his first year he had to do in Blackpool um, and it was tough like because he knew people from home that he was going to be going to school with here and it was yeah. so the moving back was a sort of a more of a family and obviously the episode were going for it so it, it just come hand in hand really at the time it was, yeah, another one who at the time they was and they were paying decent money and they were yeah, bringing was, good football league players as well. I think mm -hmm. you went there. I think Laurie Wilson, who'd been at Charlton and Stevenage. Westy, and Westy come in. Miles Weston came in. He's now left as well. Cody came in a bit later. Keds, yeah. like you say, was there. There was plenty of. Did Stuart Lewis have a spell there as well? Stuart was there just before me. Yeah. yeah. Stuart was there before me. But that the move just fell hand in hand with sort of what I was thinking about with the family life. So. I've got no regrets of doing it because I enjoyed my time there. It's just... It's just a shame everyone, really struggling now, aren't they? That's the thing. Yeah. And obviously everyone talks about the Football League. Like, I'd love to play in the Football League. Is Well, yeah, that's what I've written down. Obviously, again, it, it seems weird saying that you are still only 28 because yeah. you seem like you've been around for... You almost <laughs> think like, oh, Jack should be sort of 35 because he made yeah. a at such a young age. Um, but yeah, there's still plenty of you know mileage in the tank. I imagine you're still fit and and and, and able to play plenty of games a season. We've already said about that. So, if the one question I want to ask as well, Jack, before I let you go, has, has there ever been talk of maybe coming back to Gillingham? Has there ever been interest? Um, it's a tough one. I've obviously that's always close to my heart. If I had a chance to come back, then I'd snap snap someone's hand off for it. But um. When Justin was in charge, there was a few, like, he spoke to my agent a few times, but there was never anything concrete of me coming back. Um, spoke to the owner when I, I had a year left at Peterborough, and obviously Hesse was talking to me and talking to the owner, and it was just seeing if something could be done. But ultimately, it was just the manager's decision, and they didn't do it. But, um, yeah, obviously, I'd love to come and back. I suppose Dara pays a little bit more than Paul <laughs> as well. Yeah, but at the time, obviously, I was young. <laughs> When I was coming, obviously when Hesse was in charge in two years, like they put, I, I'd signed a new contract as well. So for me, it was I had no other responsibility. It was just me, and I was it, yeah. I was living, I was living the life then, and I just wanted to play football, um, which I still do now. I think this year, I think because I've played so well and I've enjoyed it that much, it's it's put it's made me more determined to think right next year from the East, that I'm, we're going to get like I want to get promoted and we'll have a look at yeah. yeah, like it's. Because you do, like, obviously, the Blackpool thing sort of not turned my head, but I was a bit like up and down. And yeah, I made that decision to make a drop out of the league just obviously because I wasn't getting the offers that I thought I sort of deserved, if you know what I mean, yeah. just because of how well I played that year. Sure, um, well, so you got promotion on your CV, you'd, you'd think, yeah, you yeah, know, a lot of average. You says, lad's just been promoted, he's out of contract, it's, there's going to be the phone's going to should be ringing off the hook, yeah. But, but that was a bit def obviously deflating, but yeah, so. Just obviously, I'd love to come back and play at the club, but I know that football's a funny thing and you don't always get what you deserve. Yeah, I think I remember the one, yeah, that, so that would have been the season when when we were really good and top until about February and then managed yeah. to mess it up. Yeah. So, what was that at the beginning of the season or in the January? Yeah, I think they were trying it in the summer. Yeah, I think obviously my agent speaks obviously to everyone when I'm out of contract or, um, so yeah, I think he was trying obviously, but it just never materialised anything. But you never know. Never say never. <laughs> right, Jack. It's been a real pleasure, mate. That's um.
yeah, nearly 50 minutes. It's, it's absolutely flown by. It's been great reminiscing about you growing up at Gillingham and uh, still doing your thing now, still in the National League. And, and maybe one day we'll see you back at Priestfield. Right, Jules fans, as always, you know where we are. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. You can follow Jack. He is on Twitter himself. Uh, please keep following all the guidelines. Keep staying safe. And until next time, up the Jules. <laughs>